Hey everyone, this amazing ESO Network show is brought to you by our fine sponsor, Amazon.com. Please remember to shop Amazon for all your geeky needs, no matter what time of the year it is. All you need to do is go to ESOPodcast.com slash ESO Amazon. Or click on the Amazon banner on the ESO Network webpage to go to our e-store. It's the best way to shop and the best way to support this program, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, that's enough of me babbling for now. Now on with your regular scheduled show. Are you ready to rock? This is where the world of pop culture and talk collide. Hey, how you doing, kid? This is the Adam and JP Show. Welcome back to the Adam and JP Show. It is cold in December. It is. I'm, telling, I'm telling you, man, I man. hate, hate, hate this time of year. No, I love it. I hate it. I just kind of wish I were a little bit fatter. Again. I know, with your big-ass Christmas list. <laughs> see the Friday show. Yeah, please do. <laughs> man, I have to wear a hoodie while we record. I know. Jeez. It's so cold. I know. How long before we go to Studio B? Three weeks. Three weeks? Well, no, because in three weeks we'll be on hiatus. Yeah. So When we get back from our trips. I, I remember tired. recording a January 1st show in Studio B. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or our first show in January. It'll be tough for us both, you in uh, Florida, myself in Hawaii, to come back to this in the middle of the winter. Well, I'm going to may not come back. <laughs> I haven't told you this yet. Yeah, you should stay there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave all the stuff here. As people tell me for Hawaii and anything West Coast, you go there and you want to stay. Surf's up, Big Kahuna. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Dun, 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 dun. I'm so excited dun, to like, dun, dun, wake dun, dun, up Please. a different state on Christmas. Please. Please listen to the Hawaii Five O theme nonstop. On the <laughs> <way there. laughs> and I want to hear Malakaliki Maka on Christmas Day because I can actually sing it and, and mean it. Uh huh. Yeah. Like you're gonna be singing it through the hotel. Uh-huh. Everybody does that when they come to Hawaii for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> you're nothing new. Really okay. New. But I've been reading all kinds of books about Maui while I'm there. I'm excited. Maui. It's funny the stuff they'll tell you that's pretty basic knowledge, but they give you just a heads up. Such I forget, as I'll forget the actual term. I've forgotten it already. But the you know the classic Hawaii. Uh, pinky out and thumb out, shaking hand. You know, like the whole hey, yep. surf's up, Bikuna, that whole thing. Yeah. And the, and this book I'm reading, it tells you to don't be alarmed or frightened or offended if someone does that to you. It's a, it's a sign of greeting. I thought everybody knew that. That's what I would think too. But they took it in the book, like hey, they're not they're not giving you the bird. Yeah. They're saying what's up. So is uh, when you guys land, is yeah. it like the movies from the '60s where they park the plane on the tarmac and you yeah. come down the steps, like like it's a Pan Am plane? They and do you, give you lays, and then you, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they do. It's uh-huh. a thing in the, when, in the airport there. Yeah, it's exciting. There's hula dancers. Are we all groggy and melatonin and Zequil. Lay off me. Think about this. <laughs> Just ripping my lays off. I'm so tired. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> Xbox, take me home. <laughs> um. Do you talk to your Xbox when you're not around your Xbox? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, not around it? That was a trick. That was a trick question. When I'm around it, I do, yes. Like when you're sitting away from your Xbox yeah. and you just want to talk to you're your Xbox? You're in the bathroom. Xbox, wipe me. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox, my pants. <laughs> That's where we're heading with robot yeah. technology. Very Wally style, which, yeah. by the way, it's been a few days removed. Movies that everyone else loves and I hate, Wally. Love Wally. I hate Wally can suck it. <laughs> Well, I can suck it. There's a there's a character named Eve. I know. Eve and you is... love that name. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. That's like the big band version. Are there any females named Eve anymore? <sighs> Eve. You think there's an, like an Adam and Eve couple out there? <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> if so, yeah. I want you to film their wedding with a drone. <laughs> yeah. When they get married. Through an apple. <laughs> through the wormhole. <laughs> Instead of tossing rice, everybody throws apples. Yeah, them. it's not painful at all. <laughs> hey, we're on the way to our honeymoon. Oh, what the? But thankfully, just in time for my big flight. Are you flying or driving to Florida? Oh, we're driving. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for my huge flight to Hawaii, huge flight to Hawaii. Have you ever tried to book a flight the day after Christmas? <laughs> oh, is it, is it bad? No, it's terrible. Really? Uh, but thankfully, now they announced this past week that Netflix allows you to download movies now. Yes, that's isn't awesome. that exciting? That's great. I actually have that on my list of things to talk about. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Good good segue there. Right now, it's uh, exclusive Netflix content, right, such yeah. as Orange is the New Black mm-hmm. or... The Crown. The Crown or the Marvel shows. Yeah. Uh, but And then they're selected random, like yeah. Breaking Bad yeah. for some reason. Which is fine. I mean, so I think I'm going to download a lot of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I, uh, I, as far as I know, I believe... As an overseas flight, you don't have any Wi-Fi. So that's what people were telling me. On the plane? That's what I hear. I hear like a normal flight flight to anywhere in the in the, in the, the, the mainland, you're fine. Right. But as soon as you hit over water like that, I think all 
signals and cell service, I think it's gone. That's what people tell me. I hope they're wrong. That's what I'm being told. Well, yeah. I guess it depends on the technology. But I think in a plane, aren't they using more satellite-based technology anyways? I don't, I don't know. People have told me they've had overseas flights, and once you hit the sea, all Wi-Fi is done. There's no towers out in the ocean. So I have a good four or five hours of Hearthstone, then nothingness. That's when the melatonin kicks in. <laughs> in the, the Because I thought downloads. I'd be like on the plane for 10 hours playing Hearthstone. I'm like, hell yes. Yeah. I can do that. Uh-huh. Give me some time on that. No, you need to download Candy Crush. <laughs> oh, yeah. Candy Crush Saga. Yeah. Soda Pop. I'm so curious about this flight. I'm ready to do it, like I said, and just get it out of the way. I can travel the world once I go to Hawaii. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, this is, uh, is going to be good for you. And also, Maui, the island I'm going to, once again, I'm reading this book. As far as you're uh, reading a book, I'm reading well a Maui book to get ready for. It. Okay. As far as landmass goes and the actual size of it, just a wee bit larger than the county we live in. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's weird. Uh huh. Like a major island of Hawaii. Right. A little bit bigger than our county. Uh huh. I mean, it's like a third the size of Rhode Island. I didn't know that, that's but crazy. I knew it was about the size of a, yeah. like a, a county. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Just that one island. Yeah, but it's Maui. It's one of the, you know, it's like yeah. the top two or three. It's a big mm-hmm. one. It's a big not, one. Not the main island, but it's a big one. It's a big biggie. But yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy to me. So how many airports does Hawaii have? I'm not sure the whole thing. I mean, I th- I'm not sure, to be honest. So if you can fly into I the I think ma- Maui itself has just one, I believe. Right. Yeah. Because so you can go from end to end, which we'll do, called the road to Hana, in two and a half hours. Uh-huh. End to end. And, of course, these are like windy roads that you go 50 miles an hour on. <laughs> are, are you going to visit a volcano? I think so. I mean, the, you know, what the if place, one erupts while you're there? It says it's time. <laughs> that's what it says. Yeah, that's what the Maui book says. Yeah, that's what the Maui book said. It's time. Yeah, uh, you're cruising for a bruising. Yeah, it's crazy how the whole history of the stuff. It's it's, it's nuts. Yeah. The millions of years of history in these these Hawaiian islands is kind of crazy. The millions and millions. And millions. Because <laughs> like, I mean, like I said, the, the the Hawaii islands themselves are only just raised up volcano rock, volcanic rock from the ocean. Mm-hmm. That's all you're on. It's not meant to be lived upon. Nope, not at all. Nope. <laughs> hopefully hopefully I can visit for 10 days and we'll be fine. Odds are, with my bad luck, it's when it all blows when I'm there. From and I won't know about it. Why not? Because when you go to Disney, well, I guess I would know about it. Yeah. Because you're going Christmas week. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll be there until December 30th. Because that is what I love about going to Disney, mm-hmm. is once you check in, yeah. you're removed from the rest of society. Yeah. Like, you don't know. I mean, you. I guess you can make an effort to know, but I don't. I'm curious if that's so how it'll just, be. I would imagine in Hawaii. They, I mean, they call. Well, no, they'll be all talking about the volcano. <laughs> that's what, yeah, You'll yeah. be there. What day do you go to uh, Disney 26. World? So we'll, it, it, for four days, we'll be very far apart. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be fun for you. I mean, I'm, I think you're going to have a good time. As time draws near. I, I don't think I, there's going to be a middle ground. Like I've said before, I think yeah. you're going to love it or hate it. I think, I mean, I really think I'm going to love and it. You're going to say you love it regardless. No, no, no. I think I'm going to love it, really. Uh-huh. I think so. Like, you look but, like AJ Styles with your hoodie on, <laughs> by the way. Like, the closer I get, the more excited I am. Even for the, the plane ride. I'm closer I get, the more excited I am. <laughs> There's just so many things I'm excited to see. A sunrise above the clouds. Yeah? There's a mountain we can climb above the clouds and you see the sunrise. You going to climb that mountain? Well, you drive it and hike for like 10 minutes. Oh, play yeah. some mountain. <laughs> can we relate everything about Hawaii to an <laughs> Alabama song? If you want to. <laughs> But uh, I'm excited. I'll send pictures all the way. So you're going to go on the volcano tour? You sure. Uh-huh. We, at this point, we have zero plans. It's going to be 10 days of whateverness. What if a uh, what if Abe Vigoda yeah. <laughs> speaks to you from beyond the grave <laughs> and tells you you need to jump into the volcano? I, I don't think I'll do that. I don't think I'm going to follow those 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 rules. But the like the 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 livelihood of humanity lies yeah. on you sacrificing yourself in a volcano in Hawaii. Well, sure, I'll, I'll sacrifice myself. Would you? For one, yeah. You wouldn't? I would. Adam, I know you well Wait. enough to know. Take myself down for all of humanity? Yes. Of course I would. No, you wouldn't. I would. No, you wouldn't. I'm not a terrible person. <laughs> I'm trying to see where Elvis's Aloha from Hawaii was. Which which island was that? Uh, it was Burbank. <laughs> it doesn't say. Which? Honol- okay, Honolulu. Which I'm trying to figure out my, is that the main island? I think so. Mm-hmm. Where do they film uh, Hawaii Five-0? It's Honolulu. It's on the island of Oahu. I didn't know that. Huh. So it's not Hawaii. It's Oahu, which is like a pretty small island. Well, damn. In Hawaii. Yeah, but it's yeah. not Hawaii. So Hawaii has an island called Hawaii. Right. The big island. Right. This is an, uh, Honolulu is on Oahu. I didn't know that. So the capital is Smaller on Smaller than island. Maui. Yeah, weird, huh? That is weird. Hmm. Um, 
Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. We're all counting on you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do jump in the volcano if Abe Vigoda speaks to you from beyond the grave. I don't know what that means, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I know you won't do it. I'm not going to do that. I know you won't. But I mean, for the sake of humanity, sure, but that's not the reason. That that's the only like, reason? That won't happen like that. Oahu, where Honolulu is, where uh-huh. the classic uh, Elvis Presley Aloha from Hawaii happened. Right, so Tennessee itself, we're a pretty smallish state. I mean, compared to the bigger ones, we're, we're but a long state, right? We got to think. I mean, as far as land mass in general, we are forty two thousand one hundred forty three square miles. Right, over forty two thousand square miles. Oahu, where Honolulu is, is five hundred ninety six square miles. <laughs> That's insane. It's small, like less than a fiftieth of Tennessee mm-hmm. is where Honolulu is located in the middle of the ocean. Mine is blown. There's nothing around it. How the hell do you find that? <laughs> Hopefully your pilot knows. <laughs> it's true. We'll find out. It's just it's it's blowing my mind. Have you researched the last time a plane crashed on the way to Hawaii? We don't speak of that. <laughs> we don't speak of that. <laughs> but you'll be over the ocean. I know. Yeah. They could pull a sully, land right there on the Pacific. Uh, a, I'm afraid of heights. B, I can't swim. But your flotation That's device. What we call the double screw job. You will actually get to use the instructions I, they tell you on the plane. I think I'm all right. We're good. <laughs> You're We're like up. in Tommy Boy. That's all right. It's true. <laughs> You get to pull the thing and... (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's crazy how small Hawaii in general is. But back to your... You got to think about that big plane Uh finding that small island. Apparently it's going to happen. GPS. Out in the middle of the Pacific. It's crazy, crazy time. What if a typhoon comes through? Wow. Typhoon! (laughs) Typhoon! Oahu. Aloha means what? Hello and goodbye? Uh Uh-huh. Wow. That's fun. Yeah. And I can't pronounce half of the places here. They all have apostrophes and dashes. And you should watch Lilo and Stitch. That will tell you everything you need oh, to know yeah. about the Hawaiian I culture. I saw that. I saw that. Or the new one. Mo, what's it called? Mo, Moana? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. With, the, with the rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His name is Maui, isn't it? His name is Maui. That might be the name of the movie. I think it's Moana. I always thought it was Mona, <laughs> but I heard someone pronounce Moana. <laughs> it's M-O-A-N, like Moan. Uh. Mona was a 70s sitcom. <laughs> And your favorite character on Who's the Boss? <laughs> it's true. She was. Was she the old lady? Uh, yeah, she was the sexy old lady. Or older lady. She was supposed to be sexy. <laughs> Wasn't she supposed to be kind of like Blanchish? Uh, day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. No joke. Uh, my wife and I watched roughly four hours of Golden Girls. Really? <laughs> there was nice. a Golden Girls mini marathon. Nice. We watched the Golden Girls. I thought about you the entire time. Yeah. Two of those episodes... They sat around the table eating cheesecake uh-huh. and had flashbacks to previous episodes, <laughs> which I think was every other episode of The Golden Girls. Uh, it seems like in the, in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cheesecake. In the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of B. Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of Black Friday B. Arthur. As it should be. Then we watched, um, later that night, the mini marathon continued with um, King of Queens. Oh, really? I never got into that show too much. I watched it here and there. Yeah? And... Uh, I really like that show. Really? I like Kevin James on that show. Yeah. And uh, was it uh, Leah Remy? Yeah, she's in the news now for the Scientology stuff. Well, she's right got now. a documentary out. Right, yeah. Trying to take down Scientology. She's going to wind up doing it, you know. And Tom Cruise is going to put the kibosh on that. Yeah. He's going to release you the- You hear the stuff she says about The scarabs. It's kind of crazy. Uh, well, I think she talks about, like, didn't they try to blackmail her and that yeah. sort of stuff? Yeah, and they're like, I mean, Tom Cruise is their golden child. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else did she say? Just, I mean, how... If you want to kooky, repeat it. Just how, <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Just how kooky and crazy it is. I mean, stuff we already kind of knew, but I mean, they try to uh, alter things in the media. If, if there's any kind of negativity towards the religion, they'll try to change that and pay for that to be changed and stuff like that. Yeah, what was it? Um, I mean, it seems like it's all money-driven. They asked her how much she thought she put into the Church of Scientology in the few years she was involved. She said millions uh-huh. of Leah Remini money, <laughs> which is I know. probably all of it. <laughs> Imagine how much that Tom Cruise money is. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. A lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, who's the like? Is there a leader of the Church of Scientology right now? Like, is there a president or CEO? Like, who is? There's got to there be the top of that pyramid. If this is a money thing, I don't remember who's receiving I, that money. I couldn't tell you his name, but there is. Let's ask the Oracle. I mean, or Google. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, but yeah, it's all uh, ooh, Dianetics. Yeah, based off of Dianetics, right? Which is created by a science fiction author. Hmm. Yeah, L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. Hubbard, yeah. Yeah. Created in the year. It's a very young religion. 1954. 1954. That's, yeah, when we were talking about religion a couple uh-huh. of weeks ago, and I said, I don't know about a religion that's less than, you know, 60 or 65 years old. Right. Ah, very odd. I would love to read all about this one day. And I hear, I never saw it, but I remember clips of it, of the South Park episode. 
where they, in classic comedic fashion, made fun of it. Yeah. But 100% had factual evidence. Like, this was the facts of the religion. Right. And just made it show in animated form how stupid that was. <laughs> I believe at the core, isn't like the whole core of Scientology, like, respecting the earth and Maybe. taking care of the earth? It sounds kind of Wiccan, but it could be close to it. Yeah. But uh, because I, I did see briefly uh, her, like a trailer for her documentary. Uh-huh. And she was talking about that's what she was drawn to. Yeah. It's like, why would you be against that? Right. And then she just kind of got caught up. I mean, all that. religions have something that can draw you in. Depends what you focus on. I mean, how can you be against Buddhism? Really? No, we just want to be nice guys. Yeah, just be nice to everyone. Yeah. Calmness. Just like, a, like a fat guy. Yeah, that sounds terrible. I hate that. But you know, <laughs> there, there are goods and bads to every religion. you gotta, you got to pick and choose. Um. I was talking about DirecTV, because mm-hmm. you mentioned Netflix. Right, yeah. Also, this week, uh, DirecTV now debuted. Uh, it's AT&T's video streaming service, uh-huh. 35 bucks a month. You, it, it, lots of channels. Right. HBO is not one of those channels, so you can't get HBO programming. Uh, but here's the, uh, here's the catch with DirecTV, mm-hmm. owned by AT&T, right. who also has Uverse, which is their internet service. So if you subscribe to Uverse using AT and T Internet, and you subscribe to Direct TV now, uh, it doesn't go against your data. Oh, really? So lots of people are complaining that AT and T is just basically trying to reform a monopoly of internet and TV service mm-hmm. because you know they can you know, say Netflix goes against your data or HBO Go goes against your data, but then well. You can have those services, and it's going to go against your data. But if you pay us $35 a month for DirecTV Now, yeah. it won't go against your data. So is that a thing? I mean, the, the data caps on that kind of – I just don't know. If that, I mean, I know people say that. I, I hear speak of it, but I have – I stream multiple hours every single day of my life. Mm-hmm. I've never seen any kind of slowdown or cap or anything. I don't know what that's about. I understand data caps for cell service and cell phones, but right. TV and streaming, I have no idea how that, well, how and, that translates. And critics say that theoretically – you know, AT and T could control the quality of your stream uh-huh. for Direct TV now versus any of these other streaming services, yeah. Sling or I- anything like that. Mm-hmm. So Apple TV. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But it does. Uh, apparently, the first day didn't go so smoothly. Really? Like a lot of people had a lot of problems this week when Direct TV now launched. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. To just, see. Uh, that's still even an option. I mean, I've, I, we talked about last week in the show. I've been cut from cable for over a year now, and I haven't looked back. Yeah. I feel so free. Uh Uh-huh. It's like I'm wearing no undies. (laughs) And nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm free. I I will say, though, I do like, I can watch whatever I want whenever I want. Yeah. And it's just there. And if I can't be there, that's another thing with DirecTV now. Mm -hmm. There's no DVR option. Yeah. So you can't DVR it. Uh Uh-huh. So, I don't know. I mean, with everything you have, anyone can watch anything they want whenever they want, you know? It's just always, I mean, everyone. You can't watch AMC programming. I could buy it. I mean, I'm not paying the subscription, but I could pay for it through the Xbox or through iTunes. I mean, I can still right. buy. You know, and the, I guess it evens out in the wash price wise. You kind of it's like an an a la carte thing at that point. But mm-hmm. it's still like anybody who has an internet connection can watch anything when they want ever. Yeah, that's just I don't because know. we went the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. I like we dropped Hulu. Yeah, I'm like, why do we need Hulu? Yeah, if you have if you have cable, there's no need for Hulu. We, yeah, so we don't need Hulu. We don't need mm-hmm. this. We don't need that because and like you said, it, at this point. Mm-hmm. I do believe there's a there will be a time where you know satellite television or cable television is so obsolete. Let's get soon. But at this point, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have all of this, then you don't need all these subscription based. Yeah, like I dropped the WWE Network because I never watched it. I should. It's still getting charged every month. Yeah, <laughs> I need to. So I hate yeah. to say it. Yeah, but I mean, you I know. haven't turned it on since the Rumble. That was January. Well, damn. Yeah. I paid 100, over 100 bucks this, this year and not watched one bit of it. Uh-huh. That's how they get you. That is how they get They're you. Like, oh, this is a great deal per month. I would pay 40 or 50 bucks per pay-per-view, which I never bought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the only reason yeah. why we still have Amazon Prime is because it comes with the Prime membership. Yeah. And then, right, uh, yeah. The movies. Mm-hmm. You look like you found something else. Oh, no, I'm just seeing more Scientology stuff. I didn't know that oh, was... Oh, go ahead. Uh, so, apparently, the, the, I didn't know you saw my reaction to that. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find the sentence I just read. Then I was going to bring that back up. But Elron Hubbard's image and writing, which is the creator of the Scientology Church, uh, are in all Scientology churches, his image and writing. Churches built after Hubbard's death always include a corporate-style office set aside for Hubbard's reincarnation 
with a plaque on the desk bearing his name and a pad of paper with a pen for him to continue writing his novels. When he comes back. Yeah. Every single Church of Scientology has this room. When he returns. When he returns, yeah. A large bust of Hubbard is placed in the chapel for Sunday services, and most sermons reference him and his writing. So That's, that's different. <laughs> so he just gets to choose which office he wants. Yeah. Like, I'll be in uh, what, Tuscaloosa today. But when he's reincarnated. Right. So how will they know it's him? I don't know. I guess, I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe he'll come back in a Jesus figure and say he is the chosen Hubbard. No, he's, it said, does it specifically say reincarnated? Yeah, it says reincarnated. That's the word they use. So, which by definition means he would come back as someone else. Yeah. That's reincarnation. Yeah. So how would they know? So Scientology claims that its, practice, its practices provide methods by which a person can achieve greater spiritual awareness. And within Scientology, progression from level to level is often called the bridge to total freedom. Scientologists progress from pre-clear to clear and ultimately operating thetan. Isn't this what Dave Ramsey practices about, uh, <laughs> preaches about his Probably credit so. cards? It's your path to freedom. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of cool. But yeah, I'm on This is how they get you. This is what I want to know. And I'm, I'm absolutely serious. Like, mm-hmm. how do you know when a reincarnated person shows back up and says, by the way, I'm L. Ron Hubbard, I'll take that office, that it's actually him? Wow. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah? One of the major tenets of Scientology is that a human is an immortal alien spiritual being. Yes. Termed a thedon. I may be mispronouncing Thedon, Thedon, uh, that is presently trapped on planet Earth in a physical meat body. Hubbard described these Thedons in the space opera. The Thedon has had innumerable past lives and is accepted in Scientology that lives, uh, prece- or that, that lives, 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 preceding the Thedon's arrival on Earth, lived in extraterrestrial cultures. Descriptions of space opera incidents are seen as true events by Scientologists. Wrapping up here, it says that uh, Scientologists are taught that a series of events or incidents occurred before life on Earth. Scientologists also believe that humans have hidden abilities which can be unlocked. That's crazy. I mean, not, not calling a religion crazy, but that's different. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, uh, it's you know, yeah, it's out there. Hey, I I totally believe in free religion in this country. Uh-huh. So, yeah. If that's what you believe, that's what you believe. What, what do you think makes the, a lot of celebrities go that route? I mean, I'm not a lot, but I mean, you... you I see a lot. Of, I remember a few years ago, the, the designer uh, religion was Kabbalah. You remember that? Like a form of Judaism? Uh-huh. Even Madonna. I, I yeah. believe Britney Spears was part of it for a while. A designer religion. Yeah, that's what that's it was. That's a pretty good term. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. But I mean, for, they got tattoos for it. And I never even, I haven't heard of that in the past five or ten years. But for a long time, or for a few years there, a lot of big celebrities were part of that Kabbalah. Uh-huh. In this oh, I do remember that. Yeah, but have you heard of that? I mean, is it... Legitimized since then. <laughs> like, is Madonna still practicing Kabbalah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably not. Uh, it's just it's just a weird thing to me. It is different mm-hmm. than uh, lots of people's traditional beliefs. So Kabbalah, the definition for that, the ancient Jewish tradition of mystical interpretation of the Bible, first transmitted orally and using esoteric methods, it reached the height of its influence in the later Middle Ages and remains significant in uh, Hasidism. I don't know what that is. H a s i d i s m. Okay. Hasidism. Never heard of that. Kabbalah. No. So many religions out there. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to choose Later from. Later on tonight, before I go to bed, I'm going to read deeply into Scientology. This is interesting. Is it something you think you would like to no, pursue? No, no, no. Just, I, would, I want to know more about it. I think uh-huh. everyone should be well-versed in, uh, in religions. I think it's kind of bad. If I chose to be judgy yeah. and judgmental, uh-huh. I would come down hard on uh, Scientology. Would you really? Yeah. Yeah. I think people should know about all religions. I think it's kind of... Uh, but again... United States, yeah. freedom of religion. Yeah, you know, as long as you're not hurting someone, yeah. you can worship whatever you want. Right, and I'm not gonna. That's where I don't know if I'm ready for kids or not. <laughs> I mean, really, like they should, they should know all these things and choose what they want. I think it's not really. Is it really faith if you're just regurgitating what your parents told you? Is it faith at that point? Because it's not. You should be told all things and you let you choose yourself. Is well, that bad? Are you know. talking for yourself? In because general, I think in general. For you, you'll have kids that believe in the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> I mean, in general. I know that won't be fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't told anything, and maybe that's why I believe that, because I wasn't forced upon a certain thing. I don't know. I believe in Bruce Banner. <laughs> Yay. No, I think hero. all faith you have to find for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of like ultra-religious people that have faith, with air quotes to that, and they just believe the exact same thing the parents told them since day one. Well, I mean, that can they've happen. Never, they've never read their own stuff or thought their own things. It's just what they're, they've been raised in. And I don't know if that's actual faith. Well, in organized religion... Man, it's got deep. Well, how did this happen? And in organized religion, you're going to have the same stuff passed yeah. down from generation to generation. Yeah. But do you think like the a lot of those people... And it is possible for 
you know, for your children to have the same beliefs that you have. Yeah. I, I mean, just don't know possible. if, like, the most religious people in the world have have uh, delved into and, and tried to broaden their scopes and read other, other religions. I'm just saying. Uh, you mean, are you talking about, like... Uh, like ministers and, uh, and and priests and that sort of thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, or maybe not even that level. But like, you know, well, think I mean, of think of the most religious, normal person you know that's not like a priest or a preacher, and uh, have they even opened up a uh, religious Quran what, before? like Judo Christian? Like, yeah, uh, like the Quran Judeo- or Christian? like uh, any kind of uh, Buddhist readings or a uh, you know Scientology book. Have they read even the Scientology Wikipedia page? Wait, not saying it's right, but they should know about it. <laughs> so you're saying, like, you're saying for me to pick the most. Religious person in the Christian faith, faith that, well, I know. that you would know, yeah, or anyone, yeah, yeah. even other way, like even a, uh, have they read other religions, yeah, like, um, like a hardcore Muslim, have they read the uh, the Christian Bible, have they read the Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints, <laughs> the Mormons, yeah, that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying one's right, one's wrong. I think people should be a little more well versed. I do, including know. myself. I don't know a, a quarter, a sixteenth of the religions out there. Now, to be fair, I do know yeah. a lot of Christians that have read other faiths, yeah. Material. Mm-hmm. I do not because I think you should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Because I think uh, it only strengthens yeah. your. I think that is actual faith when you know belief. other ways and you've chosen your way. Mm-hmm. I don't think faith is like what you're raised with. As weird as that sounds, you can do that. You can choose that on your own. But as far right. as blindly following because Granny said so, well, I think there is a lot of that as well. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. there probably is a lot of. Uh, that's what I've, I mean. I've noticed mostly. I'm like, eh, that's cool if you want to go that way, but make it be your way. Mm-hmm. Not because you're great, great, great. Yahweh? Players. Yeah, yo, Yahweh. They're good mm-hmm. tie-in. There you go. How did this get so deep off Scientology? You did it. I didn't mean it. You did it. I don't like to do that. I'm talking about Maui. <laughs> talking about, well, maui <laughs> You will be maui Wow, I'm going to use that. <laughs> That's going to be my toast. That's <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. You're maui Can I use that as a hashtag? Can I do it? No, that's mine. No, I'm going to hashtag it. Well, you said it. I'm going to hashtag Yeah, it's mine that you said first. <laughs> I'm going to hashtag it. We're Maui. <laughs> We're Maui. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, what if I come back with like a George Hamilton tan? You're like, hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> like you can't turn? <laughs> yeah. I'm so tan, I can't turn. I would imagine with a, with a hot tan like that. In my Maui book, it says for your first day there, don't stay outside for more than 20 minutes. What? <laughs> That's what it said. I'm serious. You're going to be in serious trouble if you don't. <laughs> um, when was this Maui book published? It seems newish. You're Maui and you. The newest state to the United States in is the, lush. the great state of Hawaii. Take a tour in the lush 1988 Lincoln Continental. Look, there's Adam. He's enjoying an afternoon on the beach. <laughs> Be careful, Adam. Don't get sunburned. Here's Robin Leach with the newest whatever. <laughs> it could happen. It's a newer book, though. It's, 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 it's from Amazon. Your Maui and you. <laughs> it looks nice. It's a nice book. Hardcover? No. Hardish. It's one of those hard floppies, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Leather bound? No. Just a nice shine to of it. Of rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Like Ricardo Montavon spoke about. <laughs> exactly. Um, have you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones? I have not. Well, if you think it got deep <laughs> just a few minutes ago. Is it getting deeper? Uh we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about the Georgia Guidestones, which yeah. is also sometimes referred to as the American Stonehenge. Mm-hmm. And in a nutshell, I'll give it to you in a nutshell and then uh, go into detail. But uh, basically, in 1979, uh, a guy walks into uh, a concrete plant in Georgia and basically commissions these huge stone tablets to be built and then arrange these stone slabs in such a way and engrave them that it's very eerie. They have uh, 10 things that should be done on there. Really? Uh, yeah. It's he, almost like a Ten Commandment tablet? Yeah, but some people call it the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist. Oh, wow. And this is in Georgia. This is in, in Georgia. like a few hours south of us. Yes. Like, it, this is well within traveling distance. Wow. Uh, and it is the Georgia Guidestones. Have I never heard of that? Or American Stonehenge. And I've got more information that I'll give to you. I'm ready. Next. You got to ask yourself one question, punk. What the hell is a cigar nerd? Welcome to the Cigar Nerds Podcast. It's the only show where two guys smoke cigars and talk about nerd culture. Do you like movies, games, comics, sci fi, pop culture, and beer? Do you like science, nerd news, explosions for no apparent reason? 
then this is the show for you. It's like being in a nerdy cigar shop, but for your ears. Check us out at CigarNerdPodcast.com. Before we get into the Georgia Guidestones, yeah. uh, you're a huge Hulk Hogan fan. Oh, huge. Well, huge ish. But not as big as you used to be. That's true. Uh, <laughs> He's coming back, right? Well, Sundance Film Festival uh-huh. 2017 <laughs> will feature the debut of the Hulk Hogan documentary. Really? Yeah, it's called Nobody Speak Hulk Hogan, Gawker, and Trials of the Free Press. Mm hmm. So, this is all about the Gawker lawsuit and kind of behind the scenes of the trial. Yeah. And, how he won that multi-million dollar lawsuit against Gawker that eventually forced him to file for bankruptcy. It is crazy how much his life has changed in the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. Which in that in that point in a man's life, it shouldn't be, things should be set. Right. Just live life. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, had the crazy divorce everyone knew about. His son was in a terrible accident and killed someone. His daughter became his daughter, <laughs> which she is now. Uh, the whole Gawker thing, the sex tape. I mean, that doesn't happen to most men in their late 50s. Right. Yeah. That doesn't really happen so often. What you going to do, brother? Yeah. It's, it's, you blame the reality show for all this happening? I do. That's crazy. I do. I think that's it was a big, large part of it. That's nuts. I mean, it's Hulk Hogan. He's He could have been set for life just to hang out. Uh-huh. Show up at WrestleMania once a year, give a good pose, an ear, you know, an ear flop. Yeah. It'd be good. Well, there's rumors that he's on the way back. That's what I hear. Ric Flair's back for sure. A guy we know in the industry kind of told me that. That Ric Flair's back? No, that Hulk Hogan may come back. Who do we know in the industry? I don't know. He's maybe wonderful from a few years ago. Paul Orndorff? <laughs> no. I'll Mr. Tell you wonderful <laughs> told you that? <laughs> yeah, him, yeah. I'll tell you later. It's funny. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, Ric Flair's back. Yeah. He just resigned with the WWE. Really? With him? Yeah. Oh, wow. So look forward to a... 80-year-old Ric Flair ripping wow. his shirt off. and Now I'm curious because there are quite a few... Doing elbow drops on his sports coat. Quite a few conventions in the area that have him as a guest. Yeah. And now that probably won't happen. Not, he's back with them. Right. Well, who knows what he's back with. Yeah. Doing. Hmm. Uh, to the Georgia Guidestones. Um, this comes from an article called The Georgia Guidestones, The Illuminati Ten Commandments. Ooh. Uh, from Rinse.com, which was copied from RadioLiberty.com. I did a little research. Radio Liberty, based right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, On the hilltops in Elbert County, Georgia, stands a huge granite monument engraved in eight different languages on the four giant stones that support the common capstones are ten guides, or commandments. The monument is alternately referred to as the Georgia Guidestones or the American Stonehenge. Unknown to most people, it is an important link to the occult hierarchy that dominates the world in which we live, <laughs> according to the author at RadioLiberty.com. Uh-huh. This is all fact, though, coming up here. Okay. The origin of that strange monument is shrouded in mystery because no one knows the true identity of the man or men who commissioned its construction. All that is known for certain is that in June of 1979, a well-dressed, articulate stranger visited the office of the Elberton Granite Finishing Company and announced that he wanted to build an edifice to transmit a message to mankind. He identified himself as R.C. Christian, but it soon became apparent that was not his real name. He said that he represented a group of men who wanted to offer direction to humanity, but to date, no one knows who R.C. Christian really was or the names of those he represented. Several things are apparent. The messages engraved in the Georgia Guidestones deal with four major fields, an establishment of a world government, population and reproduction control, the environment, and man's relationship to nature, and number four, spirit, uh, spirituality. Here's the message of the Georgia Guidestones. Here's the Ten Commandments, uh, or as this article called it, the Satanic Ten Commandments. <laughs> uh, number one, maintain humanity under 500 million. In perpetual balance with nature. What? That's commandment All of humanity. One. All of humanity. Yeah. We're, uh, we're quite a bit above that. Oh, yeah. We're well yeah. above that. Yeah. We're well above that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, guide, what, 7 billion now, I believe? Uh, closing in on it. Yeah. Uh, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Mm-hmm. Okay, so- This what sounds if, awful Aryan. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. That's exactly what that sounds like. 
uh, unite humanity with a living new language. Okay. So one language. Uh-huh. Rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Hmm. With tempered reason. Yeah. But rule over those things. Right. <laughs> Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule eternally resolving external disputes in a world court. So in 1979, when this was built, and it was debuted in 1980, this was uh, calling for a world court. Mm -hmm. Uh, Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Okay. Balance personal rights with social duties. That sounds a bit socialist. (laughs) Some of these aren't bad. I'll come back to them later. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. I have no idea what that means. It's a lot of words. It's like a bag of words. You pull one out. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Yoko Ono, the widow of John Lennon, <laughs> was recently quoted as referring to the American Stonehenge saying, quote, I want people to know about the stones. We headed toward a world where we might blow ourselves up. And maybe the globe will not exist. It's a nice time to reaffirm ourselves knowing that all the beautiful things that are in this country and the Georgia Stones symbolize that. So apparently Yoko, a big fan wow. of the Georgia Guidestones. She's, uh, she's out there now, of course. Uh, but what is the true significance of the American Stonehenge, and why is its covert message important? Because it confirms the fact that there is a covert group intent on A, dramatically reducing the population of the world, B, promoting environmentalism, <laughs> uh, C, establishing a world government, and B, D, promoting a new spirituality. This also uh, says that the Georgia Guidestones mm-hmm. point directly back to uh, the Thomas Paine written Age of what? Reason. Really? Now, you know Thomas Paine, yeah, yeah. who wrote yep. Common Sense, yeah, which was the pamphlet that was written that basically really got people fired up mm-hmm. to uh, leave the rule of Great Britain. He also wrote The Age of Reason, mm-hmm. which Thomas Paine's Age of Reason basically speaks out against in particular Christianity and this is this is not hypothetical this is true it speaks out against Christianity especially well organized religion especially Christianity and basically makes the argument that once you bring religion into the rule of people it will no longer be fair because it will always favor those members of that religion yeah and if people are, choose not to be part of that religion you know they'll uh, they'll get less representation in. Well, it's true. Government. I mean, that's uh, there are many many reasons. The whole revolution and the people coming over happened, but that was a right. That was a, it, a mean piece of that. And if you want to read Age of Reason for yourself uh, by Thomas Paine, you can find an FTP easily online. To read. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I'd never read Age of Reason. I mean, we all read Common Sense when we're in school mm-hmm. in social studies class. I'd never I'd never read uh, Age of Reason. So can we see these things? The Georgia Guidestones? Yeah. Yeah. Really? They're still there. In, um, I would never heard of this. In the, so odd. the early 1990s, they were defaced. There was a lot of graffiti. It's the only time it's ever happened. Really? And there was a lot of anti-New World Order graffiti put on the <laughs> Georgia Guidestones. In the, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the early 19, uh-huh. uh, 1990s. Now, you have the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Um. Here are the language that are representative. I'm seeing the images of these. That's crazy. Uh, English, Spanish, Hindu, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. Swahili uh, are all represented on the Georgia Guidestones. Wow. Now, you have the main monument that has the Ten Commandments on it, or the Ten Rules. Yeah. A few feet to the west of the monument, an additional granite ledger has been set level with the ground. This tablet identifies the structure and the languages used on it. It lists various facts about the size. So... It's so interesting that not only did this guy, who didn't use his real name, commission these stones to be built, he also built like explanatory tablets. Like it talks about how each one was built, like the the, the exact measurements of each, and then it goes into uh, like yeah, there's the physical data of each, and then there's uh, astronomical features. Mm-hmm. The four outer stones are oriented to mark the limits of the 18.6-year lunar cycle. The center column features a hole drilled at an angle from one side to the other, through which can be seen the North Star, a star whose position changes only very gradually over time. 
The same pillar has a slot carved through in which it is lined with the sun's solstice and equinoxes. Uh, a 7 foot 8 inch capstone allows a ray of sun to pass through at noon each day, shining a beam on the center stone, indicating the day of the year. This sounds like Age of Apocalypse. Remember the sun shines through and beams him down in his tomb and all that? Remember yeah, that? Oh, yeah. It's, like a, it's like a Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've never seen that, that. movie. <laughs> um, so as you, uh, as you can see, uh-huh. uh, this would be... Uh, tough to make. Very tough to make. And it would become of high interest to conspiracy theorists. Mm-hmm. One of them, an activist named Martin Dice, demanded that the Guidestones be smashed into a million pieces and then the rubble used for a construction project, claiming that the Guidestones are a, quote, deep satanic origin and that R.C. Christian belongs to a Lucifer secret society related to the New World Order. Lucifer. At the unveiling of the monument, a local minister pro- proclaimed that he believed the monument was, quote, for sun worshipers, for cult worship and devil worship. Others have suggested that the stones were commissioned um, by the New World Order. (laughs) Alex Jones. (laughs) What does he sound like when he cries? In his film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. Whoa, he has a film? I got to see this. I'm going to download this on the plane. Uh, he proposes that the Guy Stones are a harbinger of self-appointed elites who intend on exterminating most of the world's population. Hmm. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? Well, we talked about other people's opinions and the facts of it. What do you think? Um, here's what I think. Uh-huh. I think this was a guy that had a lot of money. I think so. Had some crazy ideas. Seemed a bit racist. <laughs> I think he would be what uh, uh, Alex Jones would call a globalist uh-huh. and just put his crazy rants on this thing. He had enough money to do this, and so he did it. And they never found out who he actually was. No. Wow. What no. was his name? Robert C. Christian? Was that what it was? R.C. Christian. R.C. Christian. I made the Robert up myself. Yeah. Huh. Here's the best conspiracy theories about the Georgia Guidestones. The stones were meant to create the New World Order. Okay. Where did this idea and concept of a new world order come from? Like wh- it's when Hulk Hogan turned bad. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but really, it's like it's a thing. You say that most people know what it means, even though it, it's not a, a, a tangible, real, viable thing. Really, you don't think so? Well, you think it is? Let me put my uh, let me put my conspiracy theory hat on. Yeah. Google George Bush talks about the new world order while I'm reading these. Okay, George H. W. Bush. Okay. Talks about the New World Order. Okay. He does do that? Yeah. See if you can find his quote. Okay. Uh, so it was uh, meant to create the New World Order. So you believe it's real? The New World Order? Yeah. Uh, the, you know what? I'm going to hold my personal beliefs until the end. Okay. Uh, number two, these stones are the working of the Antichrist. Number three, the guide stones were meant to survive a global apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Number four, the stones call for global government. Number five, the stones were designed for the worship of the sun and the devil. Number six, the monument was built on a power nexus. This conspiracy theory claims that the Georgia Guide stones were built on top of a large center of power. This core power that's hidden from the rest of the world is said to eventually be released at an unknown date and tackle the mess that our current world is in. Okay. Uh, this, number seven, the stones are intended to convey psychic messages. Yeah. <laughs> did you find the George Bush? Quote? I did. Yeah. Um, what is he it? makes it seem like a post Cold War uh, combining of United Nations, pretty much. He says, since uh, here's the actual quote, what he says in January 16th, 1991, in a speech he had, he identified the opportunity to build a new world order. He says, where the rule of law governs the conduct of nations and in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and visions of the UN's founders. Uh, uh, that's what he says, pretty much. So wouldn't you call that a one-world government? Maybe, yeah, maybe so. One governing body yeah. to oversee the entire world. Is that? Yeah. That's the that's the crux yeah. of so many of these conspiracy theories. But it's always shown in like a negative light. What, isn't that a bad thing? <laughs> Do you think that would be a bad thing? I don't think so. Like, And some of those... If you had one governing body of the whole world, you don't think that would be a bad I thing? I could be totally wrong. I don't think... I think that'd be... Put us more in uh, unity, right? You don't think so? Do you think so? I see it in a positive way. Do you think if there was one world government, who would get more? Hey, if it was properly, if it was like Kim Jong-un ruling us all, no. <laughs> but if it was like a, a legitimate 
a good organization are you person. A, are you a globalist? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. And much like, I know it's 1,000% impossible, but in those those uh, those guidestones there, they talked about one language. I've always, th- always thought it'd be better to have one language for the world. Very impossible. That will never, ever, ever happen and shouldn't, so but I think it would be easier and better for us. So you're saying all the societies across the world. Yeah, and that's the question is, which one goes away? Which of the leaders would go away? That's not fair to anyone. Should just disregard their thousands and thousands of saying. years it's of not, heritage. That's what I'm saying. It's not fair. No matter who gets taken out with the language, it's not fair, but it'd be easier, impossible, but easier from the get-go. We all had one language and one leader. It would be easier. I don't think so. You don't think it would be easier and, and just more convenient? I think it would just be ruled. I mean, you would just, if you yeah. had one person ruling the world. If you had a rule, like, think of the United States. We have a president, not a ruler. Not yet. Think of Cobra Commander. <laughs> right. Who wanted to take over the world. That's what I'm saying. It's always in a negative light, but I think if we had a, a president. Yes, because it is a negative light. If we had, like, an elected official. Like, let me tell you something. There a is world, a world vote. Look, I'm not. I don't believe in. The, you yeah. asked my personal opinion. I don't believe <laughs> in these conspiracy theories. Uh-huh. Uh, I think a world vote would work. I, I, no, I, I don't <laughs> think there should be one governing body over mm. the entire world. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way it would be fair. You think so? First of all, why would you want that? Why would you want if you're, you know. If you're Scandinavian, or if you're from New Zealand, or oh, yeah, if you're from from Africa, or if you're from Asia, or if you're from any of the continents, yeah. why would you want to disregard your heritage to join one world government? I mean, I don't mean to be that guy, but think of the the lives that would be saved because of lack of wars. If you're all under one body, one umbrella, there's no need to fight. If you had one government body to take uh-huh. over the entire world, yeah. You would have world war within months. You think so? Yeah. But at that point, they're all one country, one world. I think it'd be much more. Unless unique. that government was the government just going to enslave people, and we're just going to be puppets to that government. Well, if they need to be enslaved, I mean, what? Imprisoned, imprisoned. Are you just? Are you a character now? No. I'm just. I mean, I, I see this as a very. It won't happen. It shouldn't happen to be impossible. But I think if from the get go, what's the positive of that? Like I said, unity. I mean, what unity? There is no unity. How could there be war? There, that's not unity. How could there be wars at all? Like, unless like, like a civil war. If at one point we're all one big, huge, busted up country slash world. Forced unity is not everybody yeah. coming together and holding hands and saying we love the world. Then we're not yeah. singing U.S. I mean, for think Africa about songs. like right now more than any time the United States is pretty pretty busted up, but we're still we're still one piece. And we understand that there's no civil war going on. People are frustrated and angry. There are riots over pipelines and and, and uh, terrible political things going on, but we're still. United because but we are the United of, States of America. Think of what the core of what our disagreements are yeah. in the country currently. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it kind of stems like you talking about the, the pipeline. You're talking about the mistreatment of Native Americans. You're talking, you're talking about people respecting their heritage and feeling like it's not representative enough th- you know, across the entire country like it should be. Mm. Like their voice isn't being heard. Right. Like that's at the core of all of these social anxieties that we have right now. And we have one government. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now we have states, uh-huh. and states have representatives because we live in a um, a representative re- republic, mm. um, not a true democracy. So that's like the best you can get. And still, we don't have the total unity that you would think if you had one ruling body. Mm. Because even the founders of our country knew you can't have one, even in just one country, it's dangerous to have one body in charge. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have the the judicial, the, branches and all, the yeah. executive, and the legislative branch mm-hmm. that are all equal in the balance of power in the country. So you have the checks and balances. Yeah, I, was, I think that would continue with one the, world government. The NWO. <laughs> I don't think it would, Adam. It's tough to make it sound positive, but in my head, it's a positive thing. You... I mean, from the get, I mean, think just erase all the heritages and, and the centuries and, and millenniums of that. But, Why would you want to do that? But wouldn't it be easier if we all had one language? No, you think so? Because your, your language is part of your heritage. You should be proud of. I'm it. saying erase. The, think hypothetically, that never happened. You you want to be erased from existence? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, think from the get go, one language. I think it'd be so much easier. What's so good about having just one language? I just the, the, why the, is it easier? Just things lost in translation. Are I mean you. To this day, if you see someone, most people, they see someone come up and they speak in a different language. Uh, say if, I mean, your average American, they'll admit it or not, if they're on a plane and they hear someone behind them speaking in a different language, they're nervous. 
That's just the way it is. That's a fact. That's true. Like any language? I, th- I would think so. <laughs> I would think so. I mean, really, I would think most people... Like if somebody's speaking behind me in a Cockney accent, I get nervous? <laughs> well, that's a different language. Yeah, I don't trust those Brits. But honestly, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, most people, uh, they admit that or not, would be so uncomfortable. You, you think one world government would eradicate racism? It'd be a good step for it. I think so. If I mean, because at that point, you're not saying that person is a. If anything, it would be like a like a huge like hammer of racism you think so? that would come down across the country. Because let's say you have one world government, right? Yeah, yeah. Like in this, like by some miracle, the world comes together and says, "Yes, we will have one world government." Mm-hmm. You just have one currency. Yeah. So we just have one world currency. Well, that be. I mean, in my head, that makes more sense. In my head, it does. It like, may not in the real world, like but in my, in my Bitcoin head. Bitcoin becomes the currency of the world. <laughs> sure, whichever one you want to choose. The yen. We'll say the yen. The yen's good now. So who do you think, like, do you, do you, and, and, do you and, really believe all countries will be treated equal? So I think you're thinking of, of doing it at this point here. It's too late. It'll never work. But if from the get-go it did, that's what I'm saying. If from, Like if you could go back in time? Yeah, 5,000 years ago, we just had one language, and, and to this point here, we just, we've always had it. wouldn't think twice about it. Like, man, I wish we had 14,000 different languages in this world. We'd be so more diverse and happy. That wouldn't be the case. We'd be like, thank God we have one language. Can you imagine the, the craziness that we had 14,000? But at that point, languages? you wouldn't even know. I know, but I mean, imagine like the, uh, which you wouldn't. I mean, it'd be better then, I think. 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, one language, one, one NWO. <laughs> But okay, but I know it's impossible now. I know that. I understand. Even that. through history, when yeah. you've seen, like, take um, take the Bolshevik rev- Revolution for mm-hmm. instance. Yeah. When the Bolshevik Revolution happened, and you had one big ruling body, it wasn't great for everybody. Yeah. It wasn't unity. You had those that were favored by the governing body, and those that weren't. That's what's happening in, I mean, in the U.S. right now. It's still, it's happening everywhere. It's true. It's, but it's in the U.S., at least in the U.S., we can speak our mind. Yeah. So in one world government, do you think you would have freedom of speech? That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, I, mean, I would imagine if it's an elected official, I would think so. I'm not going for a Kim Jong leader. I'm not going for a Hitler, a Stalin. I think an elected official. But just by nature, one person in control is corrupt. Oh, yeah, for sure. That I is mean, just pure Yeah, and corruption. like you said, even the United States government's not. We see an Obama or a Trump as the leader, but there's so much more than that. Yeah, so much more, and that's understandable. I mean, they're the they're the executive, yeah. You know, they're they're the commander in chief, mm-hmm. but they're not a king. Yeah, they're not a dictator. You know, uh, in the seventies when Saddam Hussein came into power in Iraq, and he was part of the Ba'ath Party, mm-hmm. so you had the Ba'ath Party that was ruling all of Iraq. You had this one governing body, the Ba'ath Party, that ruled the whole country. Only about thirty percent of the entire population of Iraq considered themselves members of the Ba'ath Party. And so what you found was he had a lot of opposition to the North with the Shia and a lot of opposition to the South with the, um, oh, no, no, it was the, uh, the, the Kurds in the North and the Shia in the South. And so only 30% of the entire population of the country sided with Saddam Hussein's ruling party. So he governed through torture and mass murder and genocide and using chemical weapons on his own people. Mm. There was so much like he brought the hammer down so hard on the citizens of that one country. And to me, that's a great example when you have one government trying to rule over a large group of people without having representation for those people built into that government. And I think ultimately that's what you would see happen if you tried to have some sort of world government to oversee everything, is that not everyone is going to be represented because it would just be virtually impossible. I mean, you have the UN, which is a representation of nations. The United Nations has no real rule over the world. They... They meet and they discuss things, but they're not, they don't have the power to rule individual countries. Yeah, I think ultimately, if you had a one world government, you would just see whoever ha- is the biggest government right now that could take over the world trying to rule with their agenda and not necessarily have a, a representation of everyone in the world, kind of like you have on, on a, in a microcosm. In the United States, where we, we have a large number of people, and we have a government that rules over these people, and they rule with regulations, but ultimately there's representation for everyone, or in theory, there's representation for everyone inside the Senate and the House of Representatives, and the president is chosen 
uh, through a democratic process. And then ultimately, like I said, you have the Supreme Court, which is another branch of government. But then you have representation on the state level for everyone. And you have the governor, and you have the state house, and you have the state senate uh, across the country. And that's that much work and that much effort to govern 600 million people. So it would be virtually impossible to have a fair, just, and representative government to rule over the world population. Say Italy feels like they're not getting equally represented. So what do you do? Just you just bring the hammer down on them? I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I just think it'd be unity, man. Unity. That's all I'm saying. To this day, we think of uh, other other countries' leaders, and you think of them. At least that's the way the media portrays it to us. Is they're always in a negative light. Putin, bad guy, they say. Uh, Kim Jong-un, bad guy. Even Trudeau from Canada doesn't know what he's doing. You know, that's the way we see it. And I think the people that live in those countries are the exact opposite. I mean, people in North Korea, some we think they're forced, but some people love and worship those that Kim Jong family. I saw a documentary yesterday of an but American. But do you know why they do? In 1964, but do you know why lived they lived and he loves that man. But do American. you know why? Why is that? Because he doesn't have any information to know any better. Right. Because it's not allowed in that country. I mean, I don't there think, is no internet. I don't think in North any Korea. Russians hate Putin as much as we think they do. I mean, we I, I don't know. Even Trudeau, I think most Canadians like him. I would think. I think most Canadians do like him. Yeah, but we see him as a joke. He's like, ah, he's a, he's a laughing stock. I personally don't see him as a joke. <laughs> I think. I mean, I just see that as uh, anyone that's not us, be it a leader, a, a the language we speak, or a race. Sometimes even the sex we are. If it's not we as us and most people, I think it's just a negative vibe to it. And I think that would create more unity. With the New World Order. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a speech class trying to prove a point that I don't honestly believe, but I do. <laughs> but do I'm not, you? And I'm not saying New World No, I'm saying like if that happened 10,000 years ago, I think it would be a little more a little more combined. I don't think the the uh, so, many, so many religious wars would be happening. So much, I don't think so much racism would be happening. If we were all one umbrella, I don't think so. It's impossible to see now, but if I had to guess, I think it would be, it would be much more bonded if we had one language, one currency, one country. It would be more of a, of, a, of, a, of a world. So what's the heritage that we would be proud of? I, don't, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. That's the, I, an answer, I, a question I can't answer. But that's just the way I see it. And what would we look like? I have no idea. Questions I don't know. I mean, would we <laughs> still be different races? Sure, sure. Or would just be white? I mean, I think at that point, once you're under that big umbrella, it's different. I mean, we see we see brunettes and blondes and, and gingers. We don't think of so differently of that. But what's the difference in different uh, skin color or eyes eyes size or ear size or nose size? Really? I don't know, Adolf. You just seem <laughs> no, no. It's the exact opposite. You just seem a little crazy. It's the exact opposite. With Adolf Hitler, he was you know not about unity. He was trying to separate people. I'm no, to, he was trying to do the. I'm, but I'm trying to bring them together. He would not accept Jews. I'm accepting Jews. But I mean, go back to the. Uh, <laughs> I think all to, take, to bring this back to the guidestones. Yeah, one of it when it talked about you know reproduction mm-hmm. and you know fitness and all that. Like you said, that's very Aryan. Yeah, oh yeah, it is. Yeah. That's what he was. I mean, his whole point was, yeah. let's create the perfect race and mm-hmm. then we will live in unity. But I'm not, I mean, with me saying what I'm saying, if you're all in unity, the huge Samoans weighing 600 pounds, it's all we're all part of the same people. But we can't be. I know. Why not? If it happened thousands and thousands of years ago, it's hypothetical. <laughs> This is a hypothetical but, but NWO. But even in your hypothetical situation, if it happened th- thousands and thousands of years ago, yeah. we would all look the same. So be it. What? I mean, I'll, I'll take away my heritage. Sure, I'll be a Samoan. Give me a Samoan. I think in the long run— You would be, just be one. There would just be one. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what would have happened. Uh-huh. There would have to have been one clan, mm-hmm. th- like, like Clash of Clans, <laughs> and wh- like, or Risk, yeah. and one clan took over the entire world. How did this episode get so deep? I don't know. You did it. I didn't do it. I did it with your New World Order banter. You make it sound so negative. And, and I was going to make a joke at the end of this episode, like, how do you know I'm not a member of the New World I'm Order? I'm going for positivity. But really, I think the question is, <laughs> how do we know Adam's not a member of the New no, World Order? I, I mean, in the most positive way, I promise you. Like, when I say I'm NWO for life, I'm just joking. <laughs> All good intentions. I just, I've, I've always thought that about the language. I mean, in my head, how no, much easier would that be? I love the fact that we have so many languages. It just it makes, it makes the world yeah. unique. I guess so. But like I said, I mean, the majority of people, you put them on a plane and someone has a, a language they're not comfortable with in the background, that makes them uncomfortable. And it shouldn't be that way. But, but that's all the them, it though. That's I, their I agree, problem. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's their problem. I, I totally agree. Yeah. But that's just the way people work. It's sad, but it's true. I mean, that's... I mean, and they could be the best per That could be their future wife if they even gave them a shot to talk behind them, but because they speak a different language, they won't talk to them or even uh, look down upon them for that. It's not good. I don't I don't think that way, but most people do. But if we spoke the same language and looked the same, yeah. everything would be kosher. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> 
I, I don't I don't think they look the same thing. I don't, I don't believe I don't agree with that. But I mean, that's that's how it would have played out. You think so? Yeah. Like one. If yeah, maybe. One, you know. Yeah. If the Romans had taken over yeah. the entire world, <laughs> and eventually ki- everything yeah. else would have been and know. killed off everything else. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, that's another thing on well, the Godstones when it says keep the yeah. population under five hundred million. Yeah. You're talking about genocide. Yeah, I'm not agreeing with that. You're talking about finding the undesirable. I'm not agreeing with the Guidestones, for the record. Oh, I know you're not. <laughs> not I know that. you're not. Yeah. I, I realize that you're not saying yeah. that at all. For the record, Adam is not saying that. Um, once again, mm. not what he's saying. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying, yeah. but I know he's not saying Everything, that. I, I, I think this in a positive way. I think most people like a... Uh, Hitler tried to spin that in a positive, but in his heart, he knew that was evil. No, know, in his yeah. heart, he thought it was the right thing. That's so crazy to me. And I don't, yeah. In his heart, yeah. he saw that I could create the perfect race and the world will live in unity. Yeah. But when I say this, I, one I, in my head, it's still everyone looking different and, and living where they live, but having one government, I just think the unity, man, it would be there. I just think so. So in 2017, if all the countries turned over power to just I mean, one it's impossible. I'm governing never, body. It's totally impossible. It wouldn't happen, shouldn't happen at this point. It's too late in the game. Technology is here, different. I mean, But when have, in Kent Street could you have seen that happen? We have third world countries where people don't even have clean water, and we have some where people are living in, in uh, sky-rise buildings. It's too, at this point, we're too jacked up for it. It can't happen. When in history, if you could go back and point to history and say it could have happened here, when do you think it could have happened? I have no idea. I mean, like I said, what, 2,000 years ago? Like uh, could have happened during the, the uh, Genghis Khan? Yeah, I mean, I have no. I'm like a, when Genghis I'm a, Khan was marching across a, Asia. A terrible history person. I have no idea the social status of of the world ten thousand years ago. Let's say ten thousand years ago. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah. Like ten thousand. Well, once again, you ago. said Genghis Khan, a negative, a negative person. Let's give a positive person. Because I'm telling you, I mean, for one <laughs> governing body to uh-huh. be over the entire world, yeah, it would have been someone would have had to conquer the world. Yeah, and I think that's the problem. Like, if we agreed on an elected official, like I said, that's the difference. I don't and, think a conqueror, no, and, no Napoleon, no Genghis Khan. Give me, a, give me a vote. How but, about a vote? Like, just everybody comes together. Yeah, and just like unity. That's the word. There we go. But then, what would that? <laughs> it would have to happen. Yeah. In order for someone to rule the world, mm-hmm. someone has to take over the world. <laughs> you think so? I mean, that's like the only a, way it can it's happen. Like Ric Flair to be the man, you got to beat the man. Exactly. <laughs> if you want to rule the world, yeah, you got to take over the world. <laughs> That's sad. And Napoleon tried. Yeah. Uh, Hitler tried. Mm-hmm. Genghis Khan tried. The, yeah. the people have tried. That is the Ric Flair mentality. Yeah. I know I could bring you back to wrestling somehow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and two things would have happened. Yeah. It, they Slowly, every race that was undesirable would have been whitewashed out. That's terrible. That's not what I'm saying. That's what would have happened. Yeah. And those that weren't whitewashed out would have been enslaved. Yeah. To serve the master race. That's exactly that's, that's the problem. That's how it happens. That's that is how it happens. Wouldn't you think like an elected official, but except for Hitler, I mean, couldn't do that. Say, I, love him or hate him, I think an Obama leading the world wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> those those genocides wouldn't happen. We agree upon that. The terrible stuff wouldn't happen. You just kind of kind of roll with it. The past eight years, ups and downs, we roll. So we just have one currency across the world. Yeah. What be, about religion? Do you still have freedom of religion? Yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, it's like the United States. We have all kinds of religions here. So you're saying, That's fine. You're saying there's a way to have one government but maintain the individuality that we all have That's now. Think, look at America in general. It's a melting pot, man. We have so many nationalities here, religions, sexual orientations. But it's just one big country under one big umbrella. Make the umbrella bigger. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you believe in manifest destiny. Sure, yeah. Let's say <laughs> that if we just keep going west... Once again, no conquering. We'll, we'll just keep going west and just make our way around the globe. Politely again. knocking the doors. Hey, have you heard of? Uh... Well, you you want to join the American Coalition? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, no conquering. No deaths. All positivity. <laughs> Do I sound like a conquering hippie right now? Is that what's happening? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> That's in a perfect world. I know. It's, I think I, in your like heart, I said from the beginning, it's impossible. I'm aware. of that. I think in your heart, yeah, you just want to see world peace. Yeah, yeah. So that's the end result here. But I think if <laughs> and I think if ten thousand years ago of those steps were planted, if we had the same currency, same language, everyone looked, felt, smelled, and and lived differently, but we had the same foundations of, of, of currency to, and language. That's you're it. trying to create a worldwide utopia, is what you're trying exactly, to do. Exactly. Yes. Imagine an actual Garden of Eden, which is impossible. <laughs> I know. A man can dream, though, right? Well, it's not even when you, it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> really? You think so? Yeah. Did you ever read Animal Farm? Oh yeah, yeah. Like all animals are equal, except mm-hmm. some are more equal than others. Yeah. 
because yeah. eventually somebody comes up and says, I'm more equal than you are. Yeah. Uh, and that's just the way human humanity is. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think the United States is a fantastic experiment in, in government because we do have— The huge melting pot, like I said. I mean— But, yes, absolutely. And— but with that, you know, with the three branches, and it's um, it's the greatest government experiment in the history of, of the world mm-hmm. to to run a nation like the United States. Does, oh yeah, uh, where it's not a straight up democracy, you know, it's not it's not a monarchy, and it's not a dictatorship. It's a representative republic, mm-hmm. and um, it's worked out pretty good so far. Yeah. We're 200 plus years 200 in. 200 plus years in. Yeah, yeah, we're good. So, um, well, that's so interesting that I didn't I didn't know you were a globalist. Because that's what they, <laughs> is that that's a, what, is that a, is that's that what the Alex Jones call the globalist. Yeah. I mean, what you're describing <laughs> is what all these conspiracy theorists but I think when people hear that, they think of negative terms. Like, I I mean, total positive intent with well, it. Well, because it is like, you know. And I'm aware. Like I'm, I'm 99% negative. But I'm so aware it's impossible. But I think if, if, this, if it was set in stone years ago, it would be fine. I'm just. I'm still curious how that would have happened. I have no idea. I have no idea. There's only one way. It could no have. idea whatsoever. And that someone ha- would have had. To well, I mean, like I said well, earlier, third world countries. I mean, sick children and people that can't get help. You see these commercials for. There are people in that continent, maybe a hundred miles away, that can't help them because there's no currency if, in in the middle there. There's no way they can speak the same language. But if we had the same stuff, you just walk down the street and help your neighbor. Stuff like that. That's how my brain's working. Well, let me pose this to you. Yeah. Say, you know... If that happened 100 miles away from us, people would be there in a heartbeat. But with that 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 gap in the differential of, of uh, currency that probably doesn't ex- exist for them or a different language, you can't help them. There's no way to help. What about motivation? Can't. What about it? When you... Like, if that happened 100 miles... Like, you're talking about a commune uh-huh. 100 yeah. miles from here. Yeah, yeah. Where everyone's equal. Yeah. And everybody wants to go live there because it's mm-hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens when it gets overrun with lazy people and no one wants to work? Are you thinking like, uh, well, this is not a, so- a socialist society here. That's <laughs> not what I'm going for. What you're talking about is kind of socialist. No, 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 no. This is nothing, nothing, no uh, no financial stuff whatsoever. Yeah? No, no, no. Socialism is all about money to me. When I hear that, I think money. <laughs> all about the money. It's all about the, I, haven't, I haven't touched money. Uh-huh. We're, not going, we're not going there yet. <laughs> well, it's a big deal, though, when you're talking about a one world government. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is all about the money. Right. The money. Because I was going to pose this to you. Uh-huh. Uh, who do you think gets favored more in the one world government? Mm. The United States or Ethiopia? Oh, the States, of course. Okay, so now yeah. it's not fair anymore. But once again, if this had happened 10,000 years ago, there would be no United States or Ethiopia. We'd have the world, baby. We'd have Earth. <laughs> we'd have Sector 2814 over there. Ah. <laughs> That's what we'd have. Where they eat the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't that they be great? Speak, no, that would not be great. Don't you love when you travel to Hawaii? Yeah, I know. You're going to love experiencing the cuisine is, that you're not familiar with. They would be eating the same thing I'm eating. It was right now they're not eating. That's no, what no, I'm saying. it's impossible because with one, if everybody had been the same <laughs> thousands of years ago, individuality would cease to exist. I know, and I understand creativity and art and all that stuff would, and, and the heritage itself would go away. I understand that, but give and take. No, I, I like the way we have it now. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not complaining. We, I, think, we, I, think you just, I think we and most people who listen to this, who can have a device to listen to a podcast, have it pretty damn good. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying there are people out there that can't do that, and maybe that could have been changed. That's all I'm saying. With one one government, <laughs> it's possible. Man, that's how it starts. <laughs> that is how it starts. <laughs> is that how it happened? Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of, uh, it's kind of a lighter note. Speaking of, 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 well, I had one more thing about the uh, okay. yeah, Godstones, yeah, yeah. and then we'll do this and wrap up. Because uh, I don't even know how long this episode is. <laughs> um, this comes from Infowars.com. Oh, here we go. Wait, so from what you think I'm trying to say, would Alex Jones hate me or love me? He would hate you. All right. I'm doing the good I thing mean, here. He would totally hate you. I feel good about that. <laughs> I wouldn't. Really? Yeah. Most things, he, you should make him hate you, right? Well,. What I the problem I have with Alex Jones uh-huh. is just the ridiculous nature of what he says. Yeah, not necessarily the message that he has. Mm. That you know, one world government would be bad. I tend to agree with that. <laughs> but then when he presents evidence that it's happening, well, that's just ridiculous. Mm. Thus, making him like the whole inside job that like nine eleven was an inside job. Yeah. And when I really lost respect for the guy is after the uh, well, first of all, the nine eleven stuff. Yeah. 
But then once time had passed, and well, it's what does he think of the moon? Is that real to him? I don't think I've ever heard him talk about the moon landing. But he, uh, when the when the Boston bombing happened, the Boston Marathon, yeah, like the day afterwards, he had all these you know photographs where he was circling individuals claiming they were government agents. What really? Yeah. So saying they wow. That the Boston Marathon was an inside job. Wow. And get this, a lot of this, and, it, it, and I saw, uh, now granted, it was on CNN, so mm-hmm. it's the Clinton News Network, <laughs> but CNN had a story the other night, and they had gone back the last few uh, days over stuff that Alex Jones has said on his show, and then stuff Donald Trump has said, like the millions of uh, illegitimate voters that happened, uh-huh. you know, like... Like, Trump said he would have won the popular vote right. had it not been for the millions of illegal voters. Right, yeah. Like, the day before, Alex Jones said almost the very same thing really? verbatim really? on his show. That's funny. Yeah. Wow. So. But uh, the last thing about the Georgia Guidestones here from uh, Infowars.com. Bloodstains found atop the Georgia Guidestones. <laughs> wow. Drone footage appears to show bloodstains on the uppermost slab of the iconic Georgia Guidestones the monumental landmark studied by conspiracy theorists and curious persons alike. I was flying my quadcopter above Georgia Guidestones and found these crazy stains that look like blood, a man from the website uh, phenomenalplace.com describes. So so basically, um, (laughs) if you look at this, uh, they, they make the claim that perhaps human sacrifices are now taking place on top of the Georgia Guidestones. Wow. Thus... Propelling the theory that it's nothing more than a cell phone to Satan <laughs> located in the rolling hills of Georgia. Wow. The end. Finn. That was a crazy episode, right? Well, you never have that. You would just say the end. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, unless we went with French. That's true. That's the one world language. <laughs> we can do French. How about have a language that interp- incorporates all of them? Klingon. Ooh. You, you see what I'm saying? Just a series of ticks. Uh huh. <laughs> That's what I want. Because honestly, if you think of Star Trek terms, they're globalists. Every single Earthling speaks English. Think about that for a bit. I thought it's because they had a translator device. Was it that one? I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? Yeah. It's all pretty, pretty clearly English, though. Now they did explain why every alien has humanoid features. Uh-huh. That there was one like race of aliens that, when they realized they were near their extinction, mm-hmm. they traveled around. And imprinted their DNA oh, really? on different species cool. uh, across the galaxy. So that's why you have so many humanoid-looking aliens. Huh. That's Star Trek science fiction. Wow. Yeah. What were you going to say? Sorry about the oh the, the lighter note. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my fiance has an had an undisclosed virus, right? Mm-hmm. So I had been sick last month. Didn't finish all of my antibiotics. Had about six or seven left. She decides to save some money right before the wedding and just take those antibiotics anyway <laughs> of mine. Do what she wants. Uh, the sickness of hers didn't go away, so she goes to the doctor and explains what was going on. And uh, she kind of slipped up and, and just for safety reasons, told her that she'd taken some of my leftover antibiotics. The doctor went off on her and said, this is how super viruses are born. This is this, Reasons like this <laughs> are the reason the world is going to end. Like What? For, for real. Like the doctor went off on her. Because and, she's... And yelled because stuff like that, uh, the virus or the sickness was going to keep growing and become stronger because it's not... It's medicine not meant for that, and it'll adapt and evolve and grow to bigger and greater things. And uh, she said that's the reason the world is going to end, because of people like her. (laughs) I've been telling that since you you guys met. (laughs) She felt so terrible. She texted me, like, almost in tears. Like, the doctor just yelled at me. I've almost destroyed the earth. (laughs) I thought that was humorous. And you said, that's okay. When one one world government happens, everyone gets free antibiotics. I'm looking at the term globalist now. Well, what's the definition? Uh, a person who advocates the interpretation or planning of economic and foreign policy in relation to events and developments throughout the world. That is, that's just a bunch of words. <laughs> yeah. I know Trump fans that say keep using the slur globalist, which is a Trump fan is using a slur. Once again, I think I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no. There's a website, globalistagenda.org. And like I said. Let's read some of the globalist agenda. I, I'm... I'm so aware it's impossible right now. It's, it's not. I mean, we've talked about that. It's not possible. That's that's a borderline stupid idea. Uh huh. But it, a big big if back in the day from ground one of that happened wouldn't be so bad. But I can't believe there are people now trying to do this now. That that's kind of blowing my mind. Well, I mean, 
Are you talking about the New World Order? Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, it's one small group yeah. that wants to rule the world. I mean, that, that's totally absurd. Secretly rule the world. That is absurd. Is the whole thing. Is that they're secretly controlling. Surely they're smart enough to know that's impossible, right? Are they? That kind of goes back to the original question that started this tangent. I don't Do know. people believe that's real? Doesn't the World Bank have a lot of pool these days? I guess, but I mean, I guess. Does money rule everything, does it? But that's where it starts. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. It's all about the this, money. You should check out globalistagenda.org. What's some of the uh, globalist that's agenda? pretty conspiracy theory heavy here. Give me one. Let's close on something Just fun. the opening. Have you ever thought something is wrong? Have you ever thought you were being lied to by your politicians, government, and teachers? Have you ever thought you were being manipulated by the television? Have you ever wondered about how the world really works? Have you ever caught the media in a lie? Do you want to know how money really works? Have you ever wondered what the elite of the world believe and where they're taking us? Here, you'll have an opportunity to at least get a first glimpse at the true nature of the world and uh, how we have now been misled and deceived at every level. This site is not the end all and be all, but it's a start. And they have a whole breakdown of how humankind is controlled from religion to business to law to philanthropy. Check that out. That's a fun infographic. Globalistagenda.org. Wow. See, I don't, this is not my, this is not where I was going with this. Not a globalist. <laughs> No, no. Are you sure? I'm positive. I haven't read. I just want everybody to be happy. I haven't read. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Is that so wrong? I haven't read one word I agree with yet. This is this is different. Uh huh. So do you still think you're a globalist? Not at all, because they're saying here, even I mean the same religion and stuff. That's not what I'm saying. No, not at all. I'll stop with same currency, same language. That's where I back out. <laughs> can I, well, can I, I want you to pick the currency and the language. Can I back with that? Um, the yen sounds cool because you can pay, you know, like ten thousand for a, a Hot Wheels car. That sounds pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's not. It's, it it sounds re- like a lot, but that, it's not much. That's really big inflation. <laughs> that's why you probably want to go with the U.S. dollar. But then, what about the other people? Hey, you got to pick for, one. I feel bad for the yen. Like, this, oh. I'm telling you, Adam, this is how it happens. <laughs> okay, uh, and for what's language? the most valuable currency right now? Well, right now it's the U.S. dollar. That's what we're going with. Yeah, and for the language. Let's do Russian. We all sound badass when we speak Russian. Oh, comrade. <laughs> yeah, see? No. I like, I like, you don't like Russian, the Russian language? When someone speaks that, they sound cool. Oh. The women are sexy. The men are fierce. What, do you want to bring back the old USSR? <laughs> I'm just saying. Russian females are pretty sexy. They sound sexy. Russian males can kick some ass. That's what we need. Like Boris and Natasha? Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> Minus the Jason Alexander. I don't like that. See, earth worship? Uh-uh. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. This is not my style. I'm not a globalist. Okay. That is a slur, Trump. I'll take it. Okay. I mm-hmm. don't agree with it, but I agree that's a slur. Mm-hmm. Anything wow. else you want to get off your chest? Anything else you want to say to the president elect before we go? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> I think you've said enough. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna read this website created in nineteen ninety nine though, all night. Oh boy. It's got some good flash animation. We've got a lot of more conspiracy theory stuff coming up, oh. don't we? Remember when we just stopped it? Do you think Bigfoot's real? Yeah, I, I don't know. Loch Ness, is that a thing? Uh, maybe. Wow, we used to have like a geekish show. This whole thing was like an Alex Jones I branch. How'd that happen? I, I blame uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. And Pepe the Frog. I blame Pepe. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. That was a good one. That got deep. The preceding announcement. <laughs> It's been brought to you by the New World Order. <laughs> Check us out online. Well, the website's still there. <laughs> before we get taken down by some secret covert operation, adamandjp.com. And of course, uh, while it's still there as well, facebook.com slash adamandjp and on Twitter, Instagram, and used to be Vine at Adam and JP. So if you think the New World Order takes out one of us while we're on our individual vacations, yeah. who will it be? Definitely you, because you don't agree with their methods. Damn it, I was ah, going this. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Coming in 2017, <laughs> the Adam and Josh show. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll never, like, no one will even acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like, it just kind of happens. Hey, guys, like we're episode always... 204, 208, 209 here. Yeah. I'm Adam, I'm Josh. <laughs> just keeping it rolling like we always do. Let's talk about Hot Wheels. da 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 <laughs> I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. This is the Adam and JP Show.
preceding announcement have been paid for by the New World Order. This has been a production of the Adam and JP family of On Demand Talk Radio. AdamandJP.com Right now. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at ESONetwork.com.